Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 14 from the October 2021 GCE Pure Mathematics P2 A level paper from the UK syllabus, which is corresponding to what we take in P4 in differential equations. Um, so this question here is about a large tank into which water is flowing at a constant rate. The tank is a cuboid with all, all sides of neg negligible thickness. The base of the tank measures 8 meters by 3 meters and the height of the tank is 5 meters. There is a tap at the point T at the bottom of the tank as shown in figure 5. So there is a tap at the point T at the bottom of the tank as shown in figure 5. Now, at time T minutes after the tap has been opened, the depth of the water in the tank is H meters. Water is flowing into the tank at a constant rate of 0 0.48 meters cubed per minute. So that's a, a rate of volume, rate of change of volume. And water is modeled as leaving the tank through the tap at a rate of 0 0.1 times h meters cubed per minute. So again, this is a rate of change of volume. This is the, the rate of change of the volume of water going into the tank. And that's the rate of change of volume leaving the tank. So it says show that according to the model, um, 1,200 times dH dt equals 24 minus 5H. So we have to set up this differential equation from the information given. Now, what they have told us about, they have told us about the rate of change of the volume of water in the tank. So we've got water going into the tank and water leaving the tank. So the water going into the tank is 0 0.48 meters cubed per minute. So that's like a positive uh, value and the water leaving the tank is going to be 0 0.1 h meters cubed per minute that you can say is negative or you could say the difference between the water going into the tank and the water leaving the tank would be the rate of change of volume in the tank overall the net rate of change of volume so you can say dv dt would therefore be 0 0.48 take away 0 0.1 times h that is the rate of change of volume of water you know, um, in the tank, how, you know, the difference between what's going in and coming out. Now, that's the information they told, told us about. But what they want us to do is to set up a differential equation in terms of the HTT. So we want to have something that says the HTT and we're given the VDT. So how do I, what do I have to do to make this become the HTT? I have to use the chain rule. I have to multiply the VDT by something that will cause us to end up with the HTT. So I've got to get rid of this dt, um, this, uh, sorry, I have to get rid of this dv, and I have to include a dh. So if I, if I multiply dv dt by dh dv, the dv's cancel out, and I'm left with dh dt. So basically, I have to find dh dv, the rate of change of height with respect to the volume of this tank. Now, I know that this is a cuboid, and the volume of a cuboid is a length times a width times a height. And the length and width is 8 times 3. And the height of water in the tank is H. We're, de we're dealing with the water, so not the height of the whole tank, the height of the water in the tank. So we, we can say that V is equal to 24 times H. That's the volume of the tank. So we want to find what, well, we can find what dV dH is very easily. It's just 24. And therefore, we can say dH dV is going to be 1 over 24. So we can say dH dt, therefore, is going to be all of this, which is 0 0.48 minus 0 0.1h multiplied by 1 over 24. So it's over 24. Okay. Now, if I take this with this, I can multiply both sides by 24. So I have 24 times dH dt is equal to 0 0.48 minus 0 0.1 times h. Now, we want to express the answer in this form here. We don't have any decimals here. So what I can do is, to get rid of the decimals, I can multiply the whole equation, both sides, by 100. That gets rid of the decimals. So this becomes 2400, 2400 dH dt. And this becomes 48. And this becomes minus 10h. And we can see there's a common factor of, five, of 2 here. So if I divide both sides by 2, I'm left with 1200 dH dt is equal to 24 minus 5 times h, which is exactly what we were asked 
to show. Okay, so that's exactly what we were asked to show. All right, 24 minus 5H, that's correct. All right, now, part B. Now, even if you couldn't do part A, okay, part A, the answer is given to us here. So don't ever give up on a question, you know, um, if you can't do the first part of it. Look at the second part and think, well, I have to basically, um, it says, given when the tap was open, the depth of the water was two meters. All right, so when the tap was open, that's like in the beginning when time is zero. The depth of the water, which is H, was two meters. Okay, so that means H equals two and T is zero. Show that according to the model, which is this model that they told us to show and they given us the model, um, H equals A plus B e to the power of minus KT. So basically, they're telling us to solve this differential equation and write H in terms of T. So we take this differential equation, which is 1,200 dH dt equals 24 minus 5H, and we solve this differential equation by integrating both sides with respect to T. Integrate both sides with respect to T. Right. Now, here the dt's cancel out, so I'm left, now I've got to what's, what's called separate the variables. So the side that is left with dh has to have all the h terms, and the side that is left with dt has to have all the um, t terms. All right, so basically, if I divide both sides by 24 minus 5h, okay, I can write the 1200 outside the integral sign, which I prefer to do. The constant, you can do that. And this is 1 over 24 minus 5h dh. And here, there's no t terms. So this is going to be the integral of basically 1 with respect to t. Now, I like to, instead of making this as an, an indefinite integral and have plus c at the end, I know that when t is equal to 0, h is equal to, as I told us, 2 meters. Initially, okay, when the tap was open, the depth in the water in the tank was 2 meters. So when t is 0, h is 2. So I know that that's a pair of values that I have. When t is 0, h is 2. I can put those uh, values there. H is 2. All right, and I want to find an equation for H in terms of T. So I'll put the top limits as H and T. And that will get rid of the need for us to find C. Find C basically automatically without having to put plus C and all that stuff. It makes life a lot easier, I, per, I personally think. And that's how I prefer to do these questions. But you can do it as an indefinite integral. Have the equation with the plus C in there. Find the value of C by substituting these values and then continue. I personally like to do it in this. It does it in one go for you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this side with respect to H. So here we're going to have something divided something divided by, um, you know, this thing on top is like the differential or the form of the differential what it's divided by. It's of the form F dash of X over F of X. So we're going to use a lin to integrate this because if I differentiate this, I get minus 5, which is a constant. This is a constant, so we can use the lin. So this is lin of the modulus of 24, take away 5h, divided by negative 5, divide by the differential what's inside the function, and that has the limits of h and 2 equals, and this is going to be just one integrator gives you t with respect to t, that's t and 0. Okay, so now if we continue, um, we've got 1,200. And this is, if I substitute the values in here, I, well, first of all, I can take out the minus 5. That makes life a bit easier. I can then deal with that in a minute. That's lin of 24 minus 5h. Now, this can never be negative um, because um, the value of h, the maximum it can be is... Um, the value of h, the maximum, we'll, we'll see that in a minute. So let's just leave it as a modulus for now, but we'll see in a minute can, how it can have it. Because you can't, you can't have um, you know, the negative height here. But anyway, we'll leave that for now as a modulus. Normally, um, you know, you keep this in modulus when it's a pure number. And then minus the lin of the modulus of 24 minus 5 times 2, which is 10. Okay, so we've, we've substituted those values in, and this is going to be t. So let's simplify this. This is uh, 12, 5 into 12 goes 2, 
that's 240, negative 240, and you're going to have here times the lin of 24 minus 5h, okay, minus the lin of 24 minus 10, which is 14, that's positive, okay, equals t. So I can combine these two together. I have minus 240, lin of, and I've got 24 minus 5h over 14 by using this division law for these logarithms equals t. So I can say the lin of 24 minus 5h over 14 equals minus 1 over 240 times t. And we're almost um, ready to get rid of the lin now. We can get rid of the lin because this is like, remember, lin of um, a equals b. You can write that as e to the power of b equals a. This is like log to the base e. This is the base, this is the power, this is the result. So this is, you can write, rewrite this as e to the power of negative 1 over 240t is equal to 24 minus 5 times h over 14. Now we want to make h the subject, so multiply both sides by 14. So we have 14 e to the power of minus 1 over 240 times t equals 24 minus 5h. Add 5h to both sides. Subtract 14 e to the power of minus two, 1 over 240t from both sides. So you have 24 minus 14 e to the power of minus 1 over 240t. And now we can multiply, divide both sides by 5. So you have 24 over 5 minus 14 over 5 times e to the power of negative 100, uh, 1 over 100, uh, 240t. Let me just write that a bit neater e over 240 minus 1 over 240t so we can say here that the form that a is a b and k so we can say a is 24 over a is 24 over 5 b is negative 14 over 5 and k is minus 1 over 240 Okay, let's just make sure that's right. Yep, k is, okay, not negative. It's k is 1 over, 200, 1 over 240 because it says minus k. All right, so there's the answer to that question. We don't actually have to write these down. It says write it in the form. It doesn't say to actually, um, you know, state the values of a, b, and k. It says just show that it's in this form and you have to show what the values of a, b, and k are in your answer. All right, so there's the answer to this question. Now we're going to go on to the next part of this question, which is part C. Okay, so it says, given that the tap remains open, determine according to the model whether the tank will ever become full, giving a reason for your answer. So when the tank is full, okay, if full, H has to equal 5. Now, according to this model, H is going to be equal to now, this is 24 divided by 5, which is, that's uh, 4 and 4, 8, 4 fifths, that's 4.8, minus 5 into 14, that's 2.8, e to the power of negative 120, 240t. Now, if I rewrite this, if I rewrite this, this is 4.8 minus 2.8 over e to the power of 100, 1 over 100, sorry, 1 over 240t. Now, we can see that as t becomes very large, as time goes on, t becomes very large, e to the power of 1 over 240t, that becomes infinity, becomes also very large. So e to the power of that becomes very large. So you end up with as t becomes very large, that means it reaches infinity, h becomes 4.8 minus 2.8 over something really large. Now, 2.8 over something very large is tending towards zero. 2.8 over something very large tends to zero. So therefore, we can say as t gets really big, h approaches the value of 4.8. It's like 4.8 will never ever get higher than 4.8. Okay, so it's going to approach 4.8. So therefore, if the highest that this can ever reach is 4.8, the tank will never be full. Okay. So as the height of water 
never reaches 4.8 and the tank is 5, 4.8 meters is 5 meters high therefore it will never get full that's one way you could write your answer I'm sure there's other things you could say but that's a nice easy way to deal with it if you put T as a really large number this H will become 4.8 in your calculator but it doesn't quite reach that okay so there's the answer to part C of this question question number 14 from this paper from October 2021 P2 which is actually a P4 question from our syllabus which is differential equations other questions from this particular paper if I answer them will be in the playlist that should appear over here other questions from um, differential equations of P4 can be found in the playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link don't forget to look at the description of the video to find other um, you know material you might be interested in watching thank you for watching and see you soon